We have a task for you, Agent. Yes, sir. What is it? We have reason to believe that a rival agency has acquired Botulinum toxin. It should be in a bag hidden in the archives. Understood. I got this. <laughs> We need you to analyze the substance. Good to go. We'll get right onto it. We'll use NMR spectroscopy. We'll have a rating about a few hours. We have a new substance to analyze. I'll help you run it through NMR and then we'll match it with the database. Have we gotten the results? Not yet, Director. What is taking so long? What is that what you're doing? Analysis employs the use of NMR, or nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. For this, the electromagnetic energy of radio frequency is used. The spin states of the nuclei in the compound and their chemical environments affect the absorption of the radio frequency pulse. A magnetic field is generated by these spin states. So when these nuclei are exposed to an external magnetic field, they align with or against the field. There is an energy difference in these two alignments, which is displayed as a frequency. From the number of signals, we can determine how many chemically non-equivalent hydrogens are present. The intensity of these signals indicates the molar concentration of the sample. Though not pictured here, the splitting patterns of these frequencies indicates how many neighbors a hydrogen has. Tetramethylsilane, or TMS, is generally used as a reference compound in NMR. The distance between one peak and the TMS peak is called the chemical shift. This is determined by the resonance frequency of the protons in the compound. Could it be botulinum toxin? It could be. We will be able to figure it out given enough time. I found it. It's baking soda. Baking soda. Well, that was my second guess. <laughs>